so. Living out here in Skid Row, there are so many people who are battling mental illness. A lot of people got triggered just by seeing us with our cameras. You're going to get your We've seen syringes in the street. We've seen feces in the street. You can smell the lack of sanitation. So not only is this a major homeless crisis, it's a public health crisis and a mental health crisis too. Los Angeles, you probably think movie stars, beaches, and endless shopping. What you don't hear, though, is that this is ground zero of America's homelessness crisis. I'm on Skid Row, which is the epicenter of it, and I'm about to tour these 50 square blocks where folks have hit rock bottom. LA's homeless population is exploding. The number of people living on the streets and in shelters has soared by 75% in the past six years. There are up to 60,000 homeless people in LA County on any given night. The largest concentration of them live here on Skid Row, a sprawling tent city in the heart of downtown LA. A UN official described the living conditions here as shocking. Suzette Shaw has lived on Skid Row for six years. She used to live in the shelters, but now has a government-subsidized apartment. I asked her to take me on a tour of her neighborhood. All of these people in this uh, very condensed population, again, um, where do you see trash cans? Where do you see water fountains? Where do you see food? Law enforcement, duh, they don't like the tents up during the day. But then look, we have all of these people like uh, out here on the concrete uh, that are subjected to the heat and the sun and it's, it's really all the hot. other um, hills of the street. Just a block away, police closed off the street as workers conducted a massive cleanup of the sidewalk. Tell me what we're seeing right now. So this here are the hazmat street cleaning teams uh, that come out and they do street cleaning. And it's uh, periodically done. They I've been known at time to confiscate people's belongings uh, from their prescription drugs uh, to sometimes people have like birth certificates and all of that mixed in. But along with that, um, people are carrying a lot of other personal items that um, are deemed hazardous and therefore they end up throwing them away. The street cleaning is done ostensibly to stop the spread of diseases as living in these encampments poses several human health risks. There are only nine public toilets for about 2,000 unsheltered homeless people on Skid Row. Most don't have soap, toilet paper, or paper towels. Porta potties used to be here, and they took them out. Yeah. Uh, they recently, you know, installed a couple of more. But it's been a it's been a huge fight and pushback from the community in regards to the fact that there's no uh, public toilets. Where are people supposed to go? Because where are people supposed to go? The lack of sanitation largely contributed to a deadly hepatitis A outbreak that started in San Diego and spread to Los Angeles last September. On top of that, the streets are littered with needles that get reused, further increasing the risk of spreading diseases like HIV. And and hepatitis C. It's estimated that more than half of homeless people in LA County struggle with substance abuse, and about a quarter suffer from mental illness. Life expectancy here is 48 years, compared to the average American who lives to 78. The homelessness crisis is made worse by a cycle of people going from prison and jail to the streets. They don't qualify for food programs, housing, and so forth, and so then that um puts them at the mercy of being on the streets. And once here, they face further criminalization from law enforcement. We saw a heavy police presence on Skid Row, and while it's meant to deter violence and crime, residents here feel targeted. Police give tickets for minor things like jaywalking, and when people fail to appear in court, an arrest warrant is issued. Oftentimes, former inmates with mental illness end up homeless without access to medical or psychiatric help. The death of 43-year-old Charlie Kunan, who was previously treated in a prison psychiatric hospital, brought this issue to national attention. Got to step outside, man. Got to figure out what's going on. Come on, brother. In 2015, Charlie was shot and killed by LAPD after a confrontation over a suspected robbery. The situation quickly escalates when officers force Charlie out of his tent and tase him. They take him to the ground, and that's when police say he reached for an officer's gun. <laughs> Prosecutors said the officers acted in self-defense, and a police commission ruled that they were justified in the shooting. 
Suzette took me to the spot where Charlie was killed. Obviously, maybe we should have had a mental health um, team out here to maybe help the situation before then we chose to um, pull Charlie Kalong out of his tent, um, taser him, and then kill him. Women are a growing population on Skid Row. Nine out of ten women here have experienced physical or sexual violence in their lifetime. I actually felt preyed upon at times because if you're a woman living out here, then you must be, you must be a prostitute. You must be a hoe. Women have to become tough to survive Skid Row, even with each other. The irony of Skid Row is that it exists against a backdrop of glittery downtown LA. The area has rapidly developed and gentrified in the last decade. Trendy cafes, high-end lofts, and upscale restaurants have popped up everywhere, and buildings are being converted into luxury housing. All of this is driving up rent prices and making apartments unaffordable. Adam Murray is the executive director of the Inner City Law Center. He works with people who are homeless on Skid Row and helps them fight evictions and find permanent housing. Why do you think the homeless population is exploding the way it is here? I'd say more than anything else, it's the disconnect between people's incomes and the cost of living in Los Angeles. In the past 15 years, the median rent has gone up by 28% in Los Angeles, and the median rent or income has gone down by 8%. So you literally have hundreds of thousands of people every month who are struggling to pay the rent. And then when you add in those other factors that are going on in their lives, there's just not a safety net to keep them from ending up on the streets. Is the city just not doing enough, in your opinion? The city's definitely not doing enough. The county's not doing enough. Individually, we're not doing enough. Communities aren't doing enough. In 2016, L.A. voters passed a ballot measure to provide $1.2 billion in funding for the construction of 10,000 affordable housing units over the next 10 years. But where to build them is now the problem. Part of the challenge is a lot of resistance, NIMBY resistance, not my backyard resistance, to any new housing that goes in, especially affordable housing. That needs to change. The American homeless population increased last year for the first time since 2010. On any given night, about half a million people in the U.S. were living on the streets or in shelters. Meanwhile, President Trump and congressional Republicans want to cut spending on social safety net programs, including federal housing assistance. In his budget request, Trump included work requirements for people who receive public housing subsidies, food stamps, and Medicaid. He also proposed cuts to housing voucher programs that have helped people like Suzette find a stable place to live. Skid Row is an extreme case study example of homelessness in the U.S. and how for now, the problem seems intractable. Most people here are chronically homeless, meaning they've been living as such for at least a year or repeatedly. What do you think is really misunderstood about a place like Skid Row? We oftentimes pathologize poor people. We see them as lazy. We see them as not really trying to... Yeah, we don't see the resolve, the resolve that it takes to actually sustain out here and to have uh, hope when there is no hope. I've met women who are nurses, Stanford graduates, um, that come from families. I met people who are connected to celebrities living out here and we lack the seeing that these people are actually human that we're human because i live here